Okay, so in Photo P, I've started to bring in my references. I increased my space and my resolution. This is my the image that I'm most focused on. If I want to get rid of this kind of debris so it doesn't uh, confuse me, I might keep my inspiration there. But what I'll do is I'll just select around the image I want to keep. from my background and then hit command J and that will cut it out onto a layer above, right? And then since my sketch was actually on a different image, I have to cut around that. So all these compositing skills we've learned, we're gonna bring to bear. And then I told you to bring in your furthest back reference. I have those guides showing me where my, my image borders are going to be. And then bring in your next furthest back. This came in quite large. And it can be a little unclear like where that should fit, right? So what I often do is I just kind of push it off to the side for the time being. And then the next reference, that's layered on top of that. And that came in pretty large. Push that off to the side. So when I start to combine these background elements, how can I have my reference sketch in front? And this is something we did with our emojis. I'm going to take my background, and I'll just flatten all of these layers into one background, just like if I um, took a photograph of my sketchbook. So they're all merged together. And now I'm going to duplicate that, Command-J, move it up to the very top, and take its opacity down to about 30%. And then I'm going to lock it. Now the things that go underneath, I'm just placing it. They have like a little piece of tracing paper at a low opacity that show me where they can be placed. So that allows me, if I zoom out now, if I use the Move tool with Auto Select turned on, as long as this transparent layer is locked, then I can just click on the layers I want to move, and it will automatically select that layer. That's what Auto Select means with the Move tool. And then I can hit Control T, and I can play with scaling them. appropriately. I can also play with warping them. This is why organic material is a little bit easier to composite with than man-made inorganic things. Because we don't expect, you know, right angles, perfect circles in the organic world. So I can, I can warp my references a little bit. And then I'll show you how we start to bring them together. So now I have two images layered on top of each other. If I turn off my guide, I can start to get a sense of how they might blend. And a, an easy way to do that is to kind of cut away excess. So if I use my magic wand, I can cut away excess from this, just like I cut away from my background sketch. But if I try to delete it, it's going to say smart objects need to be rasterized first. So one thing that I usually do is I actually select around what I want to keep from a reference. And I'm going to keep a lot of the sky because I'm going to show you how I can blend the sky. And I might as well keep all that ground, too. But I don't need any of this outside stuff. So I'm selecting around what I want to keep. And then I hit Command-J. And I'll duplicate it. And if I have unlimited processing space, I would keep the smart object. 
But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and delete the smart object because I don't need it anymore. So now, how do I blend these two together? Well, one easy way is just take opacity. right? And then I can see where one mountain starts and the other ends. And I can see how that works with my sketch. Works pretty well. I can decide to move this layer down a little bit using the Move tool. But working on the layer that I have made uh, more transparent so I can see the mountain coming through. How do I blend this sky into this? And I have to decide, well, which one's in front and which one's behind. And I think according to my sketch, I don't really make a distinction. So I get to make these creative choices. What do I think looks better? I actually think it would look better if this one was behind this one. So I'm going to move it that way. And instead, I'm going to rasterize this layer by right-clicking and saying rasterize, so I can erase away from it and take it, it down. But what do I really want to erase away from it? Well, I want that mountain to appear. So what I'm actually going to do is I want the sky from this layer, is I'm going to have one behind it and one in front of it. So this is called internal compositing. When I take multiple copies of the same source and use them for different reasons. So for this source, I'm going to cut out the mountain. I'm just going to do a rough cut with my lasso. Hit Command J, delete what I cut it out from. And then behind that, I have this other mountain. And then behind that, I have the sky. And so how can I start to rough cut this? Well, I want it to be a smooth gradation. So instead of using my lasso, I'm going to use, I think this is the first time we've used it, the eraser tool, which you'll find with the brush tool, the pencil tool, and all of that. And I'm going to make the eraser pretty large, like at least 300 pixels. But I'm going to take its hardness down. So whenever you're using the eraser tool, this is kind of our introduction to brush kind of tools. And we're only allowed to use it in this project to erase pixels. We're not painting anything. So you can control the brush with this drop down menu in the tool options control the size and then the hardness of the brush. And we're just going to use the default round brush. But if I have the hardness at zero and the size pretty large, let's try 400, then you'll see that when I erase, it will give me a really soft edge. And the first thing I want to do is get rid of that hard edge from my lasso. Next, I can start taking away the opacity. So in the tool options, I'm going to go to a, like a 50% opacity and then start erasing with that soft edge, and I can blend one sky into the other. So that's one way we're going to composite. All right, now I can take this mountain that's on top, and you see how by just erasing it away, that mountain is now in the distance. But I want this one to be in front. So the other way we're going to cut out we can use the lasso tool and try to really tightly map these pixels. The more zoomed in, the better. Oh, whoops, on the wrong layer. Or 
we could try using some of the selection tools like the magic wand, have contiguous turned on, so only pixels that are touching each other within a tolerance of 32. See how that does. Sometimes it does a pretty good job, depending on the reference. But it took out a little too much there. So then I might do Command Z, keep the magic wand selection there, but use the, or the, yeah, the magic wand selection, use my lasso tool and hold down Option, which will subtract from the selection, the chunk that I just picked, right? Then I can use my magic wand again, select it, zoom in and see that it, it cuts a little bit too far because those pixels are too similar. So I use my lasso and I hold down option while I use my lasso and that will subtract. So option will subtract from your selection Holding down shift will add to it. And holding down nothing while you use the lasso will deselect your last selection and instead select something new. So magic wand worked pretty well for me there, except I did lose a little bit right there. So if that happens, I can go back to my original, you know, this one lasso around it this is some more internal compositing duplicate that command j it's just on its own like that and then move it above the other layers so that the top of the mountain is now complete again. And then just for ease sake, I'll select those two and merge them together. So you can, a great advantage of digital art is that you can always go back to your sources. You can always go back to the original files so even if you accidentally cut too much away or make a change you don't like, you have the originals. Everything can be repaired if you, if you deal with your compositing in the right way. So this is like digital collaging with no, no fear. So notice this is what I just did with the lasso and it's not quite as accurate but it gives me the advantage of being able to kind of cut my own path into the mountain. So if I zoom in a little bit more, I can get a better cut out of the mountain with my lasso. Excuse me, Professor, when, uh, when using that magic wand tool, mm -hmm. uh, you, could we increase the tolerance and then it would Yes. So a lot of Photoshop, being good with Photoshop is being good at selections. And so depending on your material, depending on how similar the, the, the pixels are, definitely play with the tolerance. Definitely play with, make sure you always have con contiguous turned on. Otherwise, I'd be selecting pinks, you know, within the mountain itself. Uh, realize what it's like just to use the magic wand. That's kind of just brute brute force cutting. You could also try some of the other magic wands, like the magnetic, or not magic wands, the other lassos. Like the magnetic lasso will try to match the edge just by detecting contrast. And then we're going to talk about feathering in a little bit, probably in the next video. So the, uh, so the magnetic lasso takes a little while. But yeah, whatever tools to select what you want that you can find that aren't too annoying. But my favorites are the magic wand and the regular lasso. 
And 